Good morning. All right, so for those of you who have had a good look at my channel, you've probably seen that there are a few videos there that are not about Flat Earth. Uh, and that's because before I got interested in Flat Earth, I actually used to argue with uh, creationists about common descent uh, and specifically about genetics. Uh, I would explain uh, what I'm about to explain to you guys, uh, why common descent is a fact. Uh, and literally five minutes later, they would come back with a question that proved that they did not understand uh, my explanation. Uh, and they would come back with an article similar to this one. Uh, so Darwinists point to similarities across species, classes, and phyla, uh, DNA, for example, uh, and argue that it shows we're all descended from a common ancestor. Uh, but to say these similarities demonstrate common descent ignores another possibility. Uh, while a common feature may be due to common ancestry, it may instead be due to a common design strategy. Think of cars. So a Jaguar and a Mustang share many features. Four wheels, rubber tires, two axles, windshield wipers, lights, and gas engines. That does not mean that the Mustang evolved from the Jaguar. No, designers reuse design features proven to work for specific engineering needs. Uh, we see this pattern even across disparate technology platforms. Uh, in one case, the wheel is used and adapted for a water mill. Uh, in another case for a bicycle, and in another for a truck. Uh, so you can see there are basically two explanations uh, for our genetic similarity. So number one, uh, we share a common designer, uh, and that is the, you know, the explanation that I just read out. Uh, so the two species in question do not share a common ancestor, uh, they are not related. Uh, the similarities you see are the result of a designer <laughs> who was just reusing parts for the same purpose. Uh, and the second explanation is uh, common descent. So at some point in the past, uh, these two species that we're looking at were actually part of one population. Uh, that population split into two and each separate population went on uh, to accumulate their own mutations. Uh, so for example, uh, humans and chimpanzees, we are very similar uh, genetically. Uh, and the common descent explanation for that is that uh, we split uh, from a common population not very long ago, so six million years ago or so. Uh, so we haven't had that much time uh, to accumulate mutations in our separate uh, branches of that tree. Uh, whereas something like humans and birds, for example, uh, according to Common Descent, separated a long time ago uh, and therefore have had a lot of time on separate branches and separate populations to accumulate uh, mutations. Uh, that, and that explains why we are so genetically different. Right, so which of those two explanations is actually correct? Uh, and the way we're going to answer that uh, is by looking at DNA that we know does not contribute to function. Uh, and when I say does not contribute to function, I'm not making an argument here about uh, so-called junk DNA. We're actually going to look at quite an essential protein uh, called cytochrome C. Uh, it's been well studied for, I don't know, close to 70 years or so. Um, you can read about it on Wikipedia and see what it does, uh, but I just want to draw your attention to this little passage here from the wiki page. Uh, cytochrome C has an amino acid sequence that is highly conserved in eukaryotes, differing by only a few residues. In more than 30 species tested in one study, 34 of the 104 amino acids were conserved, identical at their characteristic position. And that percentage of, of roughly 30% uh, carries across to most proteins uh, in uh, DNA. Uh, it varies between say 30 and 40%. Uh, and what that means is that uh, the other 60 to 70% of the protein uh, can tolerate some variance. Uh, and that's what we're gonna test. So here I've got uh, three cytochrome C protein sequences from three different animals. Uh, the top is the human sequence. The middle is the chimpanzee and the bottom is a worm sequence. Uh, so you can see that the human and the chimpanzee sequences are identical uh, and the worm is uh, roughly 70% identical. Uh, so the question we're asking is, are the differences in those sequences required uh, for a different function in those organisms? Uh, so for example, is there something about being human or something about being a worm uh, that requires a different sequence for that protein? And the answer is that we have already tested it. Right, so here's a paper from 1986 uh, called Amino Acid Replacements in Yeast, Isoform 1, Cytochrome C, 
uh, by this guy, uh, and here's a link if you'd like it. Um, just to explain this, this table here, uh, you've got the normal yeast uh, cytochrome C sequence running across the middle. Uh, above the line, uh, you'll see all the variants um, that they found across uh, 91 different species, including human. Uh, and below the line, you've got all the different variants that the uh, researchers tested. Uh, if the researchers tested a variant and it had a negative effect uh, on the function of cytochrome C, you'll see it in a rectangle here. Uh, so what I want you to notice is the correspondence uh, between, say, uh, blocks like this block here, where there is a lot of natural variation in the species that they looked at, and then you'll also see that uh, the researchers tested a lot of different uh, amino acids in that same position and it did not have an effect on function. Uh, the other correspondence I want you to see uh, is that in locations where there is literally no variation uh, in nature, they also tested some variants and they all had a negative effect on function. Right, so what does it all mean? Uh, obviously it means that not all of the sequence is necessary for it to function properly. Um, and that doesn't mean you can remove parts of the sequence. Uh, it means you can replace parts of the sequence and have no effect on the function. Uh, the other thing is that uh, because of the dual correspondence, uh, so there's not just correspondence between uh, high variance in nature with the high variance in the lab, those positions, there is also a very good correlation between uh, what is not found in nature, so lack of variation in nature, uh, with lack of variation allowed in the lab. Uh, so that implies that if we were able to do it in reverse, so transplant something from a yeast or some other animal into a human, uh, it would likely work. All right. uh, so getting back to the original question, what is the explanation for our genetic similarity? Um, this is the question that I pose to everyone that denies common descent and puts forward a common design scenario. Uh, so the question is, when the designer sat down to design this particular sequence, why did he put a K in humans and chimpanzees, uh, but a T in the worm? All right, now this is, this is not actually specific to cytochrome C. This is you know, across all proteins uh, in, the, uh, in the DNA of various animals. Um, as I said at the start, the, the allowed or allowable tolerance uh, in these protein sequences across the board is roughly between 30 and say 35%. So it's not just cytochrome C. But when I ask that question, every single answer, every single time has had something to do with function when I've literally just demonstrated that there is no functional difference. All right, so what could the designer have done when he was uh, sitting down to design these sequences? Firstly, he could have made all species have the same cytochrome C sequence. Uh, that could not, be, uh, could not be used to imply common descent. He could have filled those uh, functionally equivalent or sort of random spots uh, with random amino acids, and that again would not, uh, could not be used to imply common descent. Uh, or, he could have picked similar amino acids uh, or different ones, depending on uh, what you're looking at, uh, by looking at how closely the two species are taxonomically speaking, uh, knowing that we would have other evidence from morphology, fossil record, biodiversity, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, in other words, by putting amino acids there to match what we would predict uh, if common descent were true.